This program is brought to you through Full Gospel Evangelism, a ministry that was founded and led by Pastor David McKivitt. We believe Jesus is still healing, saving, and working miracles today. To contact us, write to us at Full Gospel Evangelism, 81 Valentin Road, E17 3JJ. You can also telephone us or send us a text on plus 447778690931 or plus 4402085205149. Join our Facebook group, Pastor McKivitt's Ministries. Follow Pastor McKivitt on YouTube. Support us with an online donation. Our details are Full Gospel Evangelism, account number 9906213. Sort code 602223. Thank you. God bless you. Greetings and blessings. My name is Pastor David McKivitt and this is our Victory in Truth television broadcast. Brought to you for a ministry called Full Gospel Evangelism. A ministry that believes that the Bible is the inspired, inerrant, infallible Word of God. In this ministry, we believe that Jesus is still healing, saving, delivering and working miracles today. And if you have a need, we would like to pray for you. On your screen, you will see some telephone numbers. They will be there throughout the broadcast. I recommend that you get a pen and paper and write down those numbers, even if you don't need prayer now. But you never know when you will. And we may not be on the television when you need prayer, but we'll always be by the telephone if you need prayer, counselling, someone to talk to. That is our number. That is a WhatsApp number, a signal number, a telegram number. So call us from anywhere in the world. Over here is our bank details. If you like the ministry and you want to support us in any way, this is our ministry details. Well, we're going to go straight in to the Word of God now. And I'm going to read to you a well-known chapter in the Bible. I think every Christian knows it. It's Psalms 23. Psalms 23, it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk for the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. As I said, everyone knows this psalm. Even unsaved people know that psalm. It has brought comfort, strength, and encouragement to many people over the years. I remember hearing a story that took place in the West Indies. My wife, my late wife, she came from Barbados and I remember hearing the story because in those days at conventions the children were expected to do recitations and quote scripture. The longer the recitation the more they liked it and this little girl was going to uh, say Psalms 23. She had memorised it but when she got up she got nervous and she said the Lord is my shepherd is all I want. And she went and sat down. That is not exactly what Psalms 23 says. But that is the meaning in the nutshell. The Lord is my shepherd. He's all I want. He's all we need for healing. He's all we need for miracles. He's all we need for guidance. He's all we need for salvation. He's all we need for deliverance. He's all I need. As the song says, I love that song, he's all I need. I don't always agree with every area when people say, he's all I need. I don't always agree with that. I once had a woman say to me, 
I'm not going to get married. I'm married to Jesus. I said, no, you're not. You're not married to Jesus. That wedding has not taken place yet. The wedding is for the future. And when that wedding takes place, everybody, man, woman, that is in Christ, will be married to Jesus. But that is not, that wedding has not taken place yet. We are not married to, to Jesus at the moment. And I hear some people say, I don't need to go to church. He's all I need. Well, that is not exactly true. And the Bible doesn't teach that. When God made man out of the dust of the earth, all he had was the animals. He hadn't created Eve as yet. But when Adam was all alone, God said, it's not good for man to be alone. Now, I hear people say, well, I'm not alone if I've got Jesus. I'm not alone, I've got God. But that's not what God said. God knows best. When God made Adam, all Adam had to talk to was God. But God said, it's not good for man to be alone. We need each other. That is why if you're a Christian and you say, I don't go to church, I, I just stay at home and pray. That is not what the Bible says. The Bible says we should not forsake the gathering of ourselves together. God, God used the Apostle Paul to write many of the epistles to the local church. He expects us to be part of that church. God has put a five-fold ministry, not in your living room, but in the church we need to gather together. That's God's word. You say, well, I don't agree. Well, then you don't agree with God because God puts us together to work together and someone said, Pastor McKivitt, well, there's so many hypocrites in the church. Well, there's hypocrites everywhere. There's hypocrites in the workplace, but it don't stop you going to work. And there's hypocrites in the shops, but it don't stop you going shopping. Now, one of the things, friends, is learning to work together. Going together. Even if the church is full of hypocrites, you can go there and be the only one that's not. You can be an example to the rest, but obey the scripture. So it's not true that is all we need, but is all we need when it comes to salvation. It's all we need when it comes to deliverance. It's all we need for our entrance into heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. The man who wrote this psalm was David. He himself was a shepherd's by. He knew what it was like to be a shepherd. He knew what it was like to have the responsibility of looking after the sheep. David knew that his responsibility was to protect the sheep, that no wolves attack the sheep, no lions attack the sheep. He protected them from snakes. He made sure he led those sheep to where there was green pastures. To where there was water to drink. It was David's responsibility. He knew that his sheep did not lack for anything because he was a good shepherd. But David, when recognising that his sheep didn't want anything, that it was his responsibility to look after the sheep, he looked to heaven and he said, the Lord is my shepherd. Oh yes, David could say, I am the shepherd to these four-footed sheep. But God is my shepherd. Even as I protect my sheep, God protects me. Even, though, even as I lead my sheep to where there's going to be water, to where there's going to be food, I know that my God will supply all my needs. And I know that sometimes I lead those sheep to where there are dangerous places. But those sheep do not have to fear because I'm there to protect the sheep. And David, looking to heaven, recognising the God as his shepherd, said, Yea, though I walk for the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. David cared about his sheep more than his own life in many cases. When the lion came and took one of the sheep, he chased the lion. 
and saved the lot and saved the sheep from the lion. When a bear came, he chased the bear and saved the sheep from the bear. And he knows that even as he protects his sheep, he could say, The Lord is my shepherd, he is my protector, he is my guider, he is my provider, he will supply all my needs. And then he says, He anointeth my head with oil. David knew the importance as a shepherd of putting oil on the sheep that protected them from insects that would bite them and it was used as a healing when they hurt themselves and David said he and God anointed my head with oil my cup runneth over. David paid the Lord the greatest compliment when he said the Lord is my shepherd. Why? Because shepherds were very important in the Old Testament. Moses was a shepherd when he ran away from Egypt. He became a shepherd. And when God appeared to him at the burning bush, he was doing the job of a shepherd. We read in Exodus 3, 1 and 2. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert. Now what he was doing, he was doing the job of a shepherd. And he came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire. And in the midst of the bush, he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire. And the bush was not consumed. God appeared to a shepherd by the name of Moses. And sent him down to Egypt to set to lead his people. He took a man that was leading sheep and sent him to look after his sheep, to lead his sheep out of Egypt into the promised land. He did the same with David. David, the greatest king, not the first king, but the greatest king, the one that said, God is a man after my heart. He was not perfect. David was not sinless. David had issues. He stood by and approved of Uriah being killed. He committed adultery with Uriah's wife and then had Uriah killed. At one time he reached the lowest part of his life and he acted like a madman because he was a scared. He, he acted like a crazy man. He was willing at one time to join with the enemies of God to come against Israel. But God looked beyond his faults and said, he's a man after my heart. Aren't you so glad that God can look beyond our faults and still use us? He looks beyond what we are because he knows what he can make of us. Yes, you can be a man after God's heart. You may not be perfect. You may have done a hundred things that are wrong, but God can make you a man after his heart. Why? Because God doesn't look at what you are, but on what he can make of you. He can take a shepherd and make him a king. He can take a fisherman and make him an apostle. He can take a man by the name of Joseph, rejected by his brethren, and put him second in charge of Egypt. God can make something of you. If any man be in Christ, they are a new creature. Old things are passed away, behold, all things become new. Yes, David was a shepherd. And he took, as he took Moses, a shepherd, and sent him down to Egypt to shepherd his people out of Egypt. So he took a shepherd by the name of David and caused him to roll over and shepherd his people. Amos, the prophet, was a shepherd. It's significant that when Jesus was born, the first people that the angels appeared to were shepherds. And the first people to see Jesus were shepherds. That was significant because in the natural, the first human beings that ever see a lamb being born is the shepherds. It was the shepherds. Why? It was their lambing season. And as the lambs the four-legged lamb were being born in the field. The lamb of God, Jesus Christ, 
the one that John the Baptist would later say, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world, as the Lamb, the four-footed Lamb, were being born in the field. The Lamb of God was being born in a stable, and shepherds were sent to see the Lamb of God. Shepherds were held in great respect in the Bible days because the lamb was the most common sacrifice. It wasn't the only sacrifice. There were turtle doves and bullets, etc. But the lamb was the most important sacrifice. It was the lamb that was slain at the Passover. It was the lamb on various other sacrifices. And Jesus identified himself as a shepherd. The Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, identified himself as a shepherd. In John chapter 10 verse 11, Jesus called himself the Good Shepherd. He was raised a carpenter, the son of a carpenter, but he never said, I am the Good Carpenter. He called fishermen, but he never said, I am the Good Fisherman. He said, I will make the fishes of men, but he called himself the good shepherd. There are three aspects of the shepherd's ministry of Jesus Christ. I wish I had more time to go into them, but I don't. But I'm just briefly going to into that. First of all, he was the good shepherd. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. When Jesus was born of the virgin, he was the good shepherd. He went about doing good, caring for the sheep, healing all that were oppressed, giving sight to the blind, cleansing the lepers, providing for his sheep. He took a few loaves and fishes and multiplied them and fed the people that were following. He looked after his sheep as the good shepherd. And as the good shepherd, he laid down his life for his sheep. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. There's one very important aspect of Jesus' ministry. Not only was he a shepherd, but he was a lamb. He was a shepherd, but he was a lamb. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. The shepherd of the sheep became a, la a lamb so that he could bear the price for our sins, pay the price for our sins. He is the good, he is the good shepherd. As the good shepherd, he healed the sick, raised the dead, claimed worked miracles. And Jesus announced his ministry as a good shepherd. In Luke 4, 18 onwards, he said, the spirit of the Lord, me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He have sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach the liberal to the captives, and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Jesus is saying, I'm the shepherd. I've been I'm here to look after the sheep. I'm here to deliver the sheep. I'm here to make sure the sheep don't go to hell. I'm going to lead them into the kingdom of God. I'm going to pay the price for their sins. And that's exactly what Jesus did. But not only is Jesus the good shepherd, and he's still the good shepherd. He's still the healer today. He's still the provider. And if you've got a need in your life, we would like to pray for you. Phone that number on your screen now. I'm waiting to pray for you. I'm believing that today can be your day for a miracle, your day for healing, your day for victory. But not only was Jesus the good shepherd, he was the great shepherd. When he was born of the virgin, he was the good shepherd. But we read in Hebrews 13, 20. Hebrews 13, 20. It says, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead the, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, for the blood of the everlasting covenant. From the dead, Jesus became the great shepherd. He was born of the virgin, the good shepherd. When he rose from the dead, he was the great shepherd. Let, let me read it again. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep. 
he was born of the Virgin Mary as a good shepherd. But when he rose from the dead, the great shepherd, he had conquered sin. He had made an open show of principalities and powers. And he appeared to his disciples and said, All authority, all excuse here, all authority is given unto me. He said, I give you power over all the works of the devil. I'm the great shepherd, and as the great shepherd, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. And that's what happened on the day of Pentecost. He is the great shepherd. In his ministry, the great shepherd, he conquered death, defeated Satan, made an open show of principles powers as the great shepherd he ascended to heaven sat down at the right hand of the father and he's now our great high priest we don't need to go to a priest to pray for us we can come boldly before the throne of god we don't need to go to a priest to intercede for us you as a born again christian can go straight to the throne of god yes we can pray for you and the bible says pray you one for another but don't pray, don't ask people that have left this world to pray for you. That's not what the Bible teaches. You can ask people to agree with you in prayer. You don't need to go through Mary to get to Jesus. You can go directly to Jesus Christ. He is our great high priest. So he said that he's the good shepherd. When he was born in the Virgin Mary, he was a good shepherd. When he rose from the dead... He was the great shepherd. But when he comes again, he'll be the chief shepherd. Let me read it. 1 Peter 5 4. 1 Peter 5 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory, a crown of glory that fadeth not away. As the good shepherd, he died on the cross. As the great shepherd, he rose from the dead, and he is our great high priest, the one mediator between God and man. But as the chief shepherd, he will return and reign as king of kings and lord of lords. Out of Mary's womb came the good shepherd. Out of the grave came the great shepherd. But out of the skies will come the chief shepherd. For it says in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 to 17. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 to 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God. Hallelujah. And the dead in Christ shall arise. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called to together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord as the good shepherd he bore our sins. As the great shepherd he defeated the devil and the high priest. But as the chief shepherd he will lead us into glory. Hallelujah. Jesus is a prophet, priest, a king. Hallelujah. He is a prophet and he's a priest and he's a king. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. He's here to heal you. He's here to meet your need. If you do not know Jesus, why don't you turn to him now? You say, Pastor McKibbe, you don't know how bad I've been. It doesn't matter. Jesus paid the price for your sins. You say, don't I have to improve myself? No. You can't improve yourself. Only Jesus can change you. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. As the good shepherd, he laid down his life. He came to save, for God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You can receive salvation, not by joining the church, not by sending money to some television evangelist, but by calling upon the name of Jesus. For whosoever shall call in the name of the Lord shall be saved. Today can be your day of salvation. The Jesus, the Good Shepherd, the Great Shepherd, the Chief Shepherd, is still healing, he's still delivering, and he's still working miracles today. As the Good Shepherd, he gave sight to blind Bartimaeus, 
as the good shepherd, he cleansed the lepers. As the good shepherd, he provided for the needs of the people. And he's the same yesterday, today and forever. The Jesus, the good shepherd that healed, is still healing. The good shepherd that supplied the needs of the people is still supplying the needs of the people. Blind Bartimaeus had his day. The woman with the issue of blood had her day. Today can be your day for a healing. Your day for a miracle. Your day for victory. You say, but Pastor McKibbitt, some of you might say, Pastor McKibbitt, I'm sick in my body. I feel like I'm in bondage. The great shepherd conquered the devil. The great shepherd made an open show of prince of politics and power. And today, as you watch this program, this can be your day for healing. This can be your day for a miracle. We would like to pray for you. That's why we do this broadcast. I want you to get on that phone now. You don't have to carry that sickness no more. You don't have to carry that curse no more. You can be set free. We want to pray for you. I am not the healer. Jesus is the healer. I'm not the saviour. Jesus is the saviour. But I want to agree with you for your victory, for your deliverance, for your miracle. You are not watching this programme by accident. God has ordained that you should watch this program today, that you can receive your salvation, receive your healing, receive your deliverance. Phone that number now, or we have come to the end of the broadcast. And until we meet again, this is Pastor David McKibbitt saying unto you, God be with you, till we meet again. Bye.